Most homeowners don't realize that the National Electrical Code back in their 2020 edition, now we're in the 2023 edition, but back in 2020, they added a code that now requires an SPD or a surge protection device to be placed on all services on all dwellings. So in this video, I'm gonna go in depth about what this may or may not mean for you. And I'm also gonna show you an installation of installing one of these SPDs or whole home surge protectors on my own home. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I'm gonna show you the code here in the NEC book. This is the 2023 edition. This goes all the way back to 2020. And it is code 230.67, which is under surge protection. And it says all services supplying the following occupancies shall be provided with a surge protection device. One, dwelling units. Two, dormitory units. Three, guest rooms and guest suites of hotels and motels and four, areas of nursing homes and limited care facilities used exclusively as patient sleeping rooms. And then under section B, location, it says that the SPD shall be an integral part of the service equipment or shall be located immediately adjacent thereto. And then under section D, which is a really important section of this particular code, it says replacement, where service equipment is replaced all of the requirements of this section shall apply. So why is that important? Well, what that is saying is as of right now, code is saying that anytime you replace your service panel or your service, you're going to need to install one of these surge protection devices in order for it to meet codes. So not only does that mean when you take out your old service and install a new service that you're gonna have to install one of these, but that also includes all new construction, but that does not mean that you should not strongly consider installing a unit like this on your home because there are some extremely good reasons for why the NEC required this code. And the NEC has publicly come out, some of the people that actually sit on the board of the NEC and come up with these codes and talked about why they felt like they needed to add this new code and they gave the reasons why. And some of the main reasons have to do with your safety equipment that are in your house. Things like carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors, there's a lot of other safety equipment that can be installed on a home that have sensitive equipment or parts in them that when you get a big surge, it can basically just fry those devices. They might not work in the event of a fire and therefore you know where that can lead to. Same thing with carbon monoxide detectors and any of the other safety devices that are installed on your home. Now, aside from those very important safety devices that we definitely wanna protect, this is something that I believe homeowners should want to install because you do have so many of those very expensive electronics in your home now, such as PCs, laptops, TVs, uh, stereo systems. Your appliances are a really big one. Those circuit boards that are inside of all of your appliances are very susceptible to lightning strikes and high surges along with all those other devices. Your AC units, your cooktops, your dishwasher, things like that are not gonna be surge protected. So by installing one of these, now you can protect those other devices that either don't have a possible way of adding surge protection to, or you just aren't thinking about, and you are now encompassing your entire home by having one of these installed. So it adds to the surge protection that you already have on some of those devices that you know about you wanna protect, and then also adding it to all those other devices that you haven't even thought about or currently there isn't an easy way of adding a surge protection to, again, such as your AC and some of your circuit boards and your appliances. So before I show you how I go about installing this, I'm gonna go over some of the features of this one, what all is included with it. So this is the Siemens FS140. I personally have found this by far to be the best whole home surge protection device on the market currently. It's able to handle some of the highest surges Another thing that I really like about this one is the question is, how do you know when yours needs to be replaced? The first is where you see this A and where you see this C. This is where two green lights are gonna show up once this is installed and supplying power to it. And when those green lights are illuminated, it's letting you know that this surge protector is still protecting you. It is still of good integrity and it does not need to be replaced. But when one of those green lights goes out or both of them go out, that's letting you know that there's something wrong with the surge protector and it probably needs to be replaced. Also over here where you see it says alarm, in the event that there's something wrong with the surge protector, there will also be a light blinking over here. On top of all of that, there will also be an audible alarm to try and get your attention to come and look at those lights. 
and see if your surge protector needs to be replaced. Now, as you can see, it comes with all the wiring that you're gonna need already installed in the device itself. I believe the wire length on this is either two or three feet long, but when this gets installed, we're gonna to wanna to trim this down to as short as possible. This is a NEMA rated box. So this can be installed indoors or outdoors. And in my case, my main panel is outside. So this is gonna be mounted on the exterior wall of my house. So I need to have that NEMA rated box in order to do that. Not all of your surge protectors are gonna offer that. So that's something else to take a look at when you install it. I'm going to need something to protect the wiring. So I'm gonna need some sort of conduit. And I personally like to use this. This is called liquid tight. It's ready to be used outside. But what I really like about it is that it's flexible. So it allows for you to kind of put this device where you need it and be able to bend this the way that you need it in order for everything to fit properly. Aside from this, I'm also going to need a dedicated 20 amp double pull breaker. And of course, whatever breaker you buy, you need to buy the same brand as the panel. So if you've got a GE box, you need to buy a GE circuit breaker. If you got a square D box, you need a square D circuit breaker and so on and so forth. And just like everything else for your convenience, I'll have a link for this, or if you want it separately, I'll have links for all these parts along with the double pull breaker. And of course, all the whole home surge protectors down in the description down below where you can just click on them and it will take you directly to them. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and head on outside and show you how I go about installing this whole home surge protector. And I'm also gonna show you what it looks like and how it works once it's installed. All right, so the first thing that I do before I do anything with the install is make sure that the main power is off to this panel. This install can work on either an outdoor meter box like this one is, or what is gonna be more popular is gonna be a panel that's inside, usually in the garage or the basement, somewhere in the house where you have a main disconnect and pretty much all of your circuit breakers are all in that one panel. All right, so again, before I get started with anything, I wanna make sure that the main power is turned off. Now that I've got the main power off, now I can remove the faceplate from the panel. All right, so before I get started with touching anything in this box, even though I've got this main breaker turned off, I want to verify that everything below this breaker has no power going to it. So I'm going to test each of these two legs here in order to make sure that I have no power flowing through the rest of the panel. All right, so in order to test this, I'm going to turn my multimeter over to voltage alternating current. So first, I'm going to touch both of those terminals and see if I get 240 volts which it's showing I'm getting zero volts. So that's pretty much telling us that this is off, but just to verify that everything is in fact off, we're gonna check each leg. So I'm gonna check the black side first, touch one probe to it, then touch the other probe to ground. Same thing with the second leg, I'm gonna to touch one of the probes to it, and then to ground, and as you can see, zero volts. So the power is in fact off, so I can start working in this panel. Now, before we start running wires and we start installing everything, you're gonna to need to find an entry point into your box. So in my case, I decided to go on the side here. There will be a punch out that needs to be punched out that can be done using either a screwdriver or the top of some pliers and just punch out that three quarter inch ring. All right, so now that I'm ready to start installing this surge protector, I wanna kind of dry fit where I'm going to want to install it and get an idea for how long of conduit I'm going to need. Now, of course, the shorter the better because we can trim these wires down. So I'm gonna install mine right in here. Now I'm gonna connect the conduit to the connector coming out of the surge protector. Then I'm just gonna take my wiring and run it into the main panel. And then I'm going to take my surge protector, move it back over towards the panel, push in the connector that's connecting to the main panel, then tighten down the locking nut on the connector that's going into the main panel and make sure that it's tightened down as tight as it can possibly go, making sure that there's no gap on either side of the panel. And now I can insert the four screws that are mounting the surge protector to the house. All right, so now I've got all this length of wire that I have to play with, but I don't wanna leave it this long. Again, we wanna cut these as short as we possibly can because that's just gonna increase the performance of the surge protector. Obviously, the shorter it is, the faster it's going to receive that surge of electricity and therefore just makes it a lot better. All right, so the first wire I'm gonna work with is the ground wire, which is green and yellow in color. And that green wire is gonna get connected over here to this bus bar over here on the right. Now, since this is the main disconnect, the neutral and the ground are bonded together. So in this case, you're just gonna have the one bus bar, which is for the ground and then also our white neutral wire. In your panel, it may not be the main disconnect. It might be a secondary disconnect and you may actually have them separated. So note that you wanna make sure that you're putting the ground wire on the ground bus bar 
and the white neutral wire on the neutral bus bar. So I just need to kind of dry fit this again and get an idea for about the length I'm gonna need. So I would say that right about there will be about perfect. So I'm just gonna take that bit of wire and I'm just gonna cut off the remaining wire. And as you can see, we were able to remove quite a long section of the wiring. Then I'm just gonna strip the end of the wire and then I'm just gonna push it into this space that's empty in this bus bar. And then once it's inserted into the bus bar, now I'm gonna tighten it down. Give it a pull, make sure it's in there nice and tight. Then I always go back and try to tighten it a little bit more. So that's in there nice and tight now. So I'm gonna measure out approximately how much wire I need again. Cut off the excess, strip the end of the wire. Then I'm gonna connect the end of that lead into the bus bar, just like I did with the ground. And then once it's in place, then I'll just tighten it down nice and tight like I did with the ground wire. All right, so now all that's left are our black wires. And as you can see, I've already got a 20 amp double pull circuit breaker in here. So I'm just gonna reuse this. And per the instructions of this particular surge protector, it has to be a 20 amp double pull breaker. I just wanna figure out about how long I'm gonna need my wires to be. So I'm just gonna cut both of those off. The way that these work, in order to remove them, you have to rock the top of it back towards you, and then it hinges off the bottom of this bar right here, and it'll pop right out. If we look here at the bottom, you'll see these two screws. That's where we're gonna tighten down the screws in order to tighten down the wire. And then if we flip it over here to the bottom, right here is where the wires get inserted in. And as this screw gets tightened down, it's gonna pull the bottom part of the insert there that metal plate that's on the bottom, it's gonna start pulling it up and it's basically gonna act as a vise in order to hold that wire in between those two pieces of metal there and hold it in there nice and tight. So I'm just gonna take my two wires, I'm gonna take my wire strippers and strip off the tops of those leads. Then I'm gonna take the first black wire, I'm gonna insert it in to that first slot and then I'm just gonna take a flathead or slotted screwdriver and tighten it down. We'll make sure it's down nice and tight, pull on it, Gonna see if we can tighten it down a little bit more. All right, that's in there nice and tight. Then I'm gonna take the second wire and I'm gonna do the same thing except insert it into the other hole on the other side of the circuit breaker and then tighten it down. All right, so now those are both installed. So now I can install the circuit breaker. I'm gonna insert the circuit breaker at an angle like so. Once I feel it's attached to that bar on the bottom, it's acting like a hinge. Then I'm just gonna push in on the top of the circuit breaker, push it in there and it will pop right into place. And now it's installed into the panel. So now at this point, all the wiring is done. So now I can put the front plate back on the panel. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn on the main circuit breaker. And then once I turn this circuit breaker on, which is for the surge protector, once this gets turned on, power will flow to the surge protector and we should get two green lights, one here and one here. So let's go ahead and turn on the circuit breaker and look for those two green lights. And as you can see, those two green lights are on. So that's letting us know again that everything was wired up properly. This is receiving power. It is monitoring the house and it is protecting the house from any external surges. Now, if you found value in this video and you didn't know about this new NEC requirement requiring these SPDs or whole home surge protectors, then I'm gonna post a link to a video right over here where I go over some other NEC requirements and just better practices that you might not be aware of either. So if you click on it, it will take you directly to it. So I hope that you found value in this video. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.